Is there a town in Zambia that has this much history as the town of Mbala that, if we were to write about it, would fill libraries with books in its honor and its artifacts would flood museums, known as the oldest district in Zambia, the very place where the First World War ended, and it's only an hour away from Kalambo Falls, the place where fire was first discovered in Zambia. And Mbala houses the oldest prison in Zambia, but for a town with so much history, it feels so small and underdeveloped, like nothing has really changed about the town since its glory days. Moving around the town center, there are mixed feelings of knowing so much about Mbala and seeing so few. And tourism is not as big as you wish it could be. Its growth is at a very slow pace for a town of its stature. So join me on our 22nd episode of I Travel the World. And these are some of the things that you didn't know about the town of Mbala. The first colonial settlement was in 1893 and the district was founded by U. Charles Marshall with its original site at Chief Zombie's village. U. Marshall built a well-fortified bomber at the village. The scene images of the stockade bomber which stood on the banks of the Lucheche stream. It was built on the banks because it was suitable for checking the slave routes to the east and to counter Bemba slave raids in the area. And U. Marshall acted as the magistrate and the postmaster and the rare photos of the first post office in Abercorn. And in the year of 1895, the British South African Company took over administration of the territory which was to be called Northeastern Rhodesia. And the bomber at Zombe was to be called Abercorn after the Duke of Abercorn, who was the president of the British South African Company. In the pre-colonial times, David Livingstone was the first European to explore the area around Mbala in 1867 and was followed closely by Veni Labert Cameron, who was one of the first Europeans to survey Lake Tanganyika. In the 19th century, the area was ravaged by the slave trade. This caused the British government to send representatives to strengthen imperial presence of the British in the land. And this resulted to Mbala setting off the establishment of colonialism in 1895. Hugh Marshall left his service in Abercorn to become the acting administrator of Northeastern Rhodesia in 1911, and later that year, Northeastern and Northwestern Rhodesia were amalgamated to become Northern Rhodesia. The District Commissioner Office Building was a bomber, a British Overseas Military Administration. It was the first High Court in Northern Rhodesia, which was known as the Crown Court. The African Lex Corporation, which was founded in 1877 in the land we now call Malawi, built their agencies and stores in Abercorn. The corporation, which was later acquired of its control by the British South African Company, would go on to build the Tanganyika Airport in Abercorn. And this was the first airport in Northern Rhodesia and the first in Central Africa connecting Cape to Cairo. In the 1920s, it became the Abercorn International Airport and after Zambia's independence, it was changed to the Mbala International Airport. A town management board was established in the January of 1959 and after the independence of the country in 1964 to become the sovereign republic of Zambia. The native people were now free in their own lands and this saw the town's name change from Abercorn to Mbala in 1968. The name Mbala derives from a type of spotted bushback which is known as Imbala, which was commonly found around Lake Chila and Mbala became a municipality in 1996. And freedom fighter Mr. Zanko Pundum Tembo, the man who inspired the freedom statue, was born in the town of Mbala. Walking in the main street of Mbala, here you find the oldest prison in Zambia, which was built in 1912. And just about 100 meters away, you find one of the most beautiful churches in the country, which has a wonderful and loving congregation, the All Saints Anglican Church of Mbala, which was built in 1955 by the London Missionary Society. The establishment of the Tanganyika Victoria Memorial Institute is said to be in 1902, but its original building bent down to the ground and this red brick building was built in 1950. The building was built as a cultural center, a library and a museum. The European settlers held parties, wrote plays like Alice in Abercorn. To be acted at the TVMI as theater, they played sports and established their own sports clubs like the Abercorn Yacht Club and Lake Chila provided for fishing, boat cruising, sailing and swimming. The town had its own monthly newspaper called Abaconocopia that shared stories of the people that lived in the town of Abacon.
During the colonial times, the people of Abakon and the surrounding territories were now troubled by locusts, which found their breeding grounds in the regions of Lake Tanganyika, Lake Chila, and Mweruantipa. This saw the establishment of the Red Locust Control in 1929, which would fight against the infamous plague that lasted from 1930 to 1944. The dark clouds of locusts were spread out in all directions, which left leafless trees, grassless tracts, and empty croplands. The locusts ate the crops and vegetations around the area, and Abercorn became the headquarters of the International Red Locust Control Service, and this building was erected in 1949. But today this structure is dilapidated and abandoned, and the red locust is just nearby the Grasshopper Hotel. I spent a night here, and it really needs a lot of improvement. And I spent my other night at this Mbala Hotel, which was originally known as the Abercorn Arms Hotel. It was used by the colonial military personnel as an armory, a lodge and a bar during the colonial days. Mbala is the place where the First World War actually ended. Let me show you. You see this World War Memorial situated in the middle of the roundabout in the town. This monument marks the location where the German forces laid down their arms and surrendered. Because during the First World War, the German general Paul Emil von Leto Vorberg had led an effective campaign to keep the British forces occupied and away from the lines in Europe. With his troops, he entered northern Rhodesia and defeated the British forces in Abercon. They would capture and hold the British soldiers in their own prison, which is today a national monument. General von Leto Vorberg proceeded to capture the town of Kasama, and the fighting continued in northern Rhodesia, even after November 11th. 1918 and the general later heard of the armistice that had been signed in Europe to end the First World War only three days after it was signed during his conquest in the territory and this event is marked by the Chambeshi monument in Kasama area the British command then ordered General von Lothar Vorberg to march back to Abercon and on the 25th of November 1918 a final surrender was held at Abercon making this spot the final end of the Great War in Africa and following the surrender, the German forces were directed to throw their weapons into Lake Chila, and the soldiers then returned to German East Africa, the country now known as Tanzania or Tanzania, and some of these weapons were recovered from the bottom of the lake, and can now be seen at the Motomoto Museum right here in the town of Mbala. And I had a great time seeing the different artifacts and learning about the history of the country in the museum. Mbala is home to the Polish refugee camp, which is one of the oldest international refugee camps in the world, which provided refuge for the Polish people, who were running away from Adolf Hitler's German army and Joseph Stalin's Soviet Union military invasion of Poland. A village specially built for the refugees may seem a little strange to them at first, but they'll soon grow accustomed to it as a new home. The story of Mbala talks about the soldiers who fought in the First World War, the freedom fighters who called this place home, the tribes and traditions that have built a culture that defined this place. It was amazing seeing all these historical sites, walking through the town and learning just how important Mbala is to the country's history. My tour of St. Francis Parish of the Catholic Church, seeing this beautiful church, walking through its corridors, and my visit to the town of Mbala is one of the most memorable. And I just want to say thank you to Mr. Maurice Chitima, who offered to show me around the town and taking me to the museum and recommending places to see. And whenever you travel to Mbala, you can take your time to see Lake Chila and Kalambo Falls. You can also travel to Mpulungu and see Lake Tanganyika. This has been an amazing experience to learn about the town of Mbala from I Travel the World. See you in Pulungu. Come in, come